Welcome to Obsidian for Tabletop RPGs. Let's check out Database Folder. Okay, so tonight we're going to be having a look at Database Folder. This is a fantastic new plugin that kind of tries to replicate the uh, the database themes or styles that Notion provides in uh, its, its capabilities. And what that basically means is that you can have notes with these little mini databases in them, and those databases can be used to create new notes and to, to you know review your existing notes. It's really quite handy. And just as an example, let me show you what I'm talking about. So over here, I've got an add new players note. Okay, this is a database note. It's been made by this plugin. And when I go to that note, just so you guys can see what I'm in, I'm in this note, you can see here that I've got a really nice colorful table that shows all of the other notes that exist inside of here. Just so you can see it, we can come up here and we can see in the open database settings that I have set a filter, or set a filter here, sorry. So I am filtering to only show any notes where I have a tag that is called role, that equals player. And that's something that I wanted to obviously have in here. Um, so that I can have a table that shows all of my players. And I, I like to have this, this is really quite handy um, because having the players um, able to be linked in my notes means I can always have access to people's character sheets. Um, I think this one here, for example, is a really good example where it's D&D Beyond character sheet. I find that quite handy because um, that means I can bring it up at any time and access that player's character sheet wherever that character is linked. So it's handy having a note for every player. Um, but um, one thing I suck at, and if we have a quick look through here, is you'll notice that I don't necessarily have the same format for everything um, because I'm always learning how to do new things. And you know, one thing that I do for one player, I might not repeat for another one. So this is a nice file for me or a nice plugin because what this allows me to do is to set some sort of standard for the tags that I want to have in every player node that I can create. Okay, and what you can see here is that I've got a, a table that shows you all of this data so I can see clearly what I've done. Um, but watch this, right? So let's say that we're making a new character for Bob. All right, we create a character for Bob. Bob's real name is Tom. Well, his player name is Tom. So there we go. Um, his Elias is Thomas. He's level three like everybody else in my party. But check this out, you ready for this? Because this is cool. Drop down boxes. All right, so he's a sorcerer. His race is a turtle. Um, he's a player and he's a player. All right, and notice that when I've done this, if we come over to here and have a look, we've got Bob. All right, Bob has now changed over to another thing. All of this data here has been pre-populated. So it's created the note and then it's created the front matter up here to basically say, well, this is the, the data that you provided, so here you go. So I now have the exact same uh, elements in all of my notes across all of these files, and I think that's really handy. Now I can see a number of places where this might be useful. So I'm starting to think like maybe an items database or maybe a magic items database or a monsters database or an NPC database, right? So you can create these database folders for different sort of situations in your, your vault um, so that you can use these effectively as wizards to set those things up and make sure that you've got it. Another thing that you can do with all of this is you can easily audit your, your, um, your notes. So in this case here, like Garvok is missing the race, right? So I don't know what the race is. I need to go away and find that out. I can easily tell that now because I have an automatic database that's listing everything for me. Like, that's really handy. And just to show you how this works, if I go to Dungeon Master, let's remove the race from Dungeon Master and then go back to the other new player. All right, you can see Dungeon Master has now been updated and the race is gone. And I can come in here and click the option again. Like, that's really handy. So anyway, how do we install this plugin? Well, just like with all of the plugins, we go down to settings, we click settings, we go to community plugins and we go browse. Now, you do need to make sure you've got safe mode turn off. And I assume if you're watching this video, because we are getting into quite advanced topic now, that you've already watched some of my previous videos, which you should already be at this stage. All right, so we're going to go browse. We're going to go search community plugins. And you do need to make sure that you've got the data view plugin installed. Now, a lot of us already have this. I haven't done a video on it specifically. I will do one in the near future, um, but this is getting pretty advanced now. Um, this is a prerequisite for this plugin. So go ahead, 
uh, install it and enable it, this is a requirement. Once you've got data view installed, uh, do a search for database folder. All right, you can see it's by Raphael. Huge shout out to Raphael, like I'm really enjoying this plugin. He's done a fantastic job and he just he's provided some personal fantastic support for me to get up and running with this because I personally did have issues with a really large vault having issues with data view. It wasn't there with his plugin, but uh, he went out of his way to help me. So thank you, Raphael, I absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, so go through, install and enable this plugin. Obviously, with all the plugins you install, you should go through and read the documentation and the readme file and understand how it's working and what it can do. Um, but this one is very simple. So once we're here, all we need to do, and let's uh, let's go ahead and actually make a, a new database for session journals. So we're going to right click on a folder. All right, we're going to come down here to create database or new database folder. All right, I'm going to go create session journal all right and as you can see it's already brought in all of the information from other these sessions so what do we want to do uh, let's just jump over here and have a look so I know I need a session date I know I need players all right so let's come here to create new session all right I need a session date and we want this to be in a date format so we'll have that as a date did that one work? There we go. So pick a date. Um, I don't do need to wonder about what this will look like in terms of um, formatting. Nope, nope, there we go. And so it's already picking that through. Like how good is that? All right, so now on top of that, I also know I need players. Now I've got this for another reason. I'll show you quickly what I'm doing with it. We need another column for players. Um, we're going to enter that and I'm going to change that one to a number. Alright, so now we have a session date, we have a file name, we have a session date, we have players. That allows me to keep everything up. I'm just going to click out of it and back in just so it updates. Alright, we can see here that I've been testing. So I have four play uh, six players, six players and four players. And then here's the dates that I had those sessions on. Now these ones here are not actually session notes. Um, so what I really want to do is find a way to actually um, filter this. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come back here to create new session date. I'm going to come up here to the options and we're going to go open database settings. And I'm going to come down here to the plus button and I'm going to change this to session date must contain well, must be greater than zero. I wonder if that'll work. No, not yet. So the trick with a date is that you need to find out what that date actually equates to. All right, so this might not work, but hang on, what if I do players is greater than zero? If we click back out, didn't work. wonder why it didn't work. Players. Is not equal to null because uh, that will capture anything that's blank. So I think it's got to be greater than or equal to one. And for some reason, it's still bringing this in, and it could be because I've got some other stuff going on in here. All right, I'll play around with that later. It's not important for now. Just as long as you understand the functionality is there. Now, obviously, if I want to create a new session here, so let's say they, um, oh, the players head to, where are we currently? I'll go Flan. All right, so I can have a session here. I can tell this that we had the session on Sunday and we have five players turn up. All right, so now I have a note over here called the players head to Flan. You can see the date. You can have the uh, number of players turn up. Um, and the reason why I want that, just so you guys are aware, is I'm starting to play around with this um, this really cool thing here, which is like a calendar that shows me when my sessions ever occurred, right? So as you can see, we haven't been playing enough. Uh, good old COVID and work always getting in the way, but you get the idea. By having a templated uh, note that creates these articles in the same way, I'm now setting up a workflow that's going to ensure that this here 
populates as I start putting my session journals. So I just think that's really cool. So anyway, like that's that's what database folder is all about. It's about having that one note that brings all of your data together so that you can see, you know, you can filter on it, you can sort on it, you can create new things. It's going to make sure that that metadata is always there. Um, and I personally think that is a really super handy thing to have. So yeah, let's let's see how you guys use it. So anyway, uh, without further ado, I hope you guys have enjoyed this content. Uh, if you do, please do like and subscribe. Um, and a massive thanks to my patrons because uh, as hopefully you can see by tonight, I had a bit of an upgrade on the video editing side of things. So a huge thanks to my patrons because it's you guys that have made that possible. So thank you. So without further ado, I'll see you guys in the forums. Enjoy your evening.